hello and welcome to today's video this is hopefully going to be a fun one this is the mid-year free kick tag i've done this video every year since i started making like bookish content and it's so good it's so good normally it's up by now honestly it's normally the first video i do in july but it's now the 22nd of july i am still only counting all of the books that i've read between january and june but yeah this is a little late and to be honest very late for me i do like this to go up right at the middle of the year but unfortunately i didn't get there this year but yes the mid-year free kick tag this is a bookish tag that gets done during the middle of the year and it is a total of 13 questions that ask you about your reading over this first half of the year thoughts feelings books plans all that it was originally created by Read Like Wildfire and Earl Grey Books who will be linked down below in the description box. I can't find the original videos but the channels are linked down there. And I think that's everything I need to say. Should we just get into the questions? Uh, I think that's the plan. Question number one. Best book you've read so far in 2024? I don't even have to think about this. This is Storm of Secrets and Sorrow. This is the second book in the Legacy series. I think it's going to be very difficult for anything to knock this off of top spot. So yeah, it's been amazing. I really really enjoyed it it got five stars there's so many quotes there's so many things in it i read it on my kindle i enjoyed it so much i knew i needed to get the physical copy because before book three comes out i'm gonna want to reread it and i figured what better way to reread it than to read it physically and really just try and absorb as much as possible because so much happened in this like so so much the legacy series i would say is a I mean it's classed as fantasy romance but I definitely say it's more fantasy, it's more about the plot. It, there is like a sprinkle of romance but it's not really the main focus and I would say it's quite dark, like there's definitely a lot of dark themes, our characters are really going through it and just ending up in shit basically but it's really 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 great. We've got Faye, we've got Legacy, we've got other variety of things that I'm not going to say too much about. This is a series in the same universe as the lady of darkness series which is a completed series and i would definitely recommend reading that one before this one i'm definitely really glad that i read it that way but yeah this is just amazing i yeah i, I don't really know how to talk about it i wrote a massive review about it on goodreads so i guess i can link that down below but yeah absolutely amazing question number two best sequel you've read so far in 2024 now obviously if i hadn't used the previous book for best book that could also be the best sequel but with that already being used the sequel i'm going to go with is garlic and the witch this is the sequel to garlic and the vampire and yeah it is an absolutely lovely stunning graphic novel with absolutely gorgeous imagery throughout and in this we follow garlic garlic is our little character here she is part of a vegetable garden and it's just really really lovely i wasn't sure what would happen in a sequel because garlic and the vampire felt very self-contained except for maybe one little thing that maybe could be explored and what i thought could be explored was definitely the thing that was explored in this where it was done in such a bigger way in such a lovely way and yeah in this one it is much more about growing and growth and being ready for that and not knowing what's coming and just yeah life basically and i absolutely loved it i gave this one five stars again and yeah highly highly recommend question number three new release you haven't read yet but want to for me this is zodiac academy number nine which is restless stars this is the final book in the zodiac academy series i started a reread of the series because i've never read the final few books before and i started this a while back thinking i would have the reread complete by the time book nine came out and i haven't yet i have not complete my reread i'm actually um currently reading book 
7. Yeah, I think I'm currently reading book 7. So I'm really close and I definitely will get to this. But oh my gosh, like even where I'm at now, I'm so intrigued as to how this ends and what happens and how we move forward. And that's where I'm at now. We've got multiple books in between where I'm at now and this final book. I just can't imagine where this is going to go. But I'm so excited to read it and so excited to see how the series finishes and where our characters move to. And there's definitely some things that at this point still haven't happened that I would really like to see. And there's definitely some consequences that I'm like, are these repairable? Are we living with this? So yeah, very intrigued. Question number four. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This is Tempest of Wrath and Vengeance. This is the third book in the Legacy series and to be quite honest like I think this is the only book that has potential to knock my top book off the top spot. Obviously right now my top book of the year is book two in the Legacy series. The fact that book three is also coming out this year is so ridiculously exciting and I really think it is the only book that could potentially take the top spot that I haven't read yet this year. Obviously I could be surprised by something that I'm not expecting but the books that I'm expecting to read this year just knowing how good legacy number two was this is it. I'm definitely like so excited so anticipating it will probably be up at midnight on release day getting it on my kindle and just like binging through so. Question number five, biggest disappointment from the Coffee of Love. Now I don't read a lot of romance and I put quite a bit of research into the romance books I do pick up before I pick them up to give myself the best chance of liking them and I thought this was gonna be amazing. Honestly I thought I was gonna give this five stars and I didn't. In the end I gave this one 2.5 stars which just isn't really great is it? Like I don't know like 2.5 stars for me is borderline am I even happy I read it and I don't know like I think if I wasn't expecting anything from this I'd have been happy to read it but I expected it to be amazing there was a tv show on Netflix many many years ago called Spinning Out and I was expecting similar vibes from this and to be honest it just felt lacklustre in every single element so yeah I mean yeah if I'd have gone into it with no expectations would I liked it more potentially but yeah like I don't it wasn't even the hype that got me with this it was all the research I've done everything I've looked into I just didn't like it so yeah moving on from that negative note question number six is biggest surprise this for me has to be gender this is a book that got five stars it is a very short little non-fiction about how gender has been depicted through art and analyzing gender in art gender performance like all this different you know artistic speaks that I don't know that much about but really understood whilst I was reading this gender is a polyphonic portrait of the representation of gender in art from acclaimed playwright and artist Travis Alabanza and yeah it really was that this it was such a surprise to me because I knew nothing about it. I'd never heard of it. We went to an exhibit at the Tate Modern in London and you know you always end up in the gift shop, you always end up in the book section. And I got this one and one other, they're on like a deal. I think if you brought two they were quite a bit cheaper than if you were buying them individually so I got two. And on the train journey on the way back I was just not vibing with my audiobook and I was like well I've purchased books today let's have a look at this and I picked this up. And I did not put it down. I finished it like before the end of the train journey. I spent so long in it. There is so much tab, so much underlined throughout this. And it's done in a really interesting way. So essentially as things are being written about in this book, every so often you will see it say C page, whatever. And then you go to the back and the images and the paintings or artwork it could be stat statues sculptures or anything or in the back of the book so you can see exactly what is being spoken about and really analyze it yourself at the same time as having the author tell you these things the way this put together fact or interpretations the author's own opinion and just really an amazing look at how gender has been shown and depicted in art and the positives and the negatives and the lack of representation for a lot of people like honestly this was just amazing if you're going to pick up a non-fiction this year i would highly highly recommend this this is what it looks like and it's it's short it's tiny including the pictures this is 47 pages amazing 
absolutely surprised me because I wasn't expecting anything. I picked this up in a gift shop of a art gallery, which is an art gallery that I do think quite highly of and do enjoy. But yeah, a massive surprise, five stars. Still think about things said in this to this day. Question number seven. Newest favorite author, new or debut to you? No. I only have one answer. I wouldn't necessarily say they're a favourite author in terms of actually going on like a favourite author list if I was to do that. Like I've never actually made that. But I think in my mind I've always thought I need to give an author three five stars to class them as a favourite author. And ideally three five stars over different like series, not all in the same series. Obviously like, you could just love that series, it doesn't mean you love the author. So I haven't got any that fit that criteria. But I do have an author that I'd never even... Honestly, I don't think I'd heard of previous to this year. And I've never read two of their books. And both the books got 4.5 stars. Like, they're both so close to being five stars. And I've already got another one of their books on my bedside table ready to read. Like, I really see this being an author that I pick up a lot of work from. So, first of all, I read Feybend. And then after reading Feybend and giving this 4.5 stars, I looked what else the author had published. And they'd also published The Final Strife. And the author is Sara L. Arifi. Yeah, both of these were 4.5 stars. I think this one has potential to be five stars on a reread, so really, really excited. Currently got book two in this series on my bedside table, and book three comes out later this year. I imagine myself reading the entirety of this series this year, and I think book two of the Feybone series will be coming out next year, I think. So yeah, overall really exciting, really like the writing style, really like how characters are depicted, find it very easy to root for characters that this author writes, the worlds are so interesting. So yeah. Maybe not necessarily favourite author in how I'd personally categorise it, but definitely for the year, an author that I'll continue to pick up work from. Then question number eight is newest fictional crush. I personally always change this to newest fictional like ship. So like a couple that I ship rather than someone I'm crushing on. Cause like, I don't really do that to be honest. But I do often like really ship and get behind couples in books. And the one that I've decided to go for is Sovereign and Rook in The Throne of Honour and Blood. Um, I'll pop the book in here. This is book two of the Crown of Oaths and Curses series. And yeah, in book one, The Crown of Oaths and Curses, I just did not ship them at all. Like I like I, f I could feel like we could get somewhere, like I could see potential, but I could also see potential of it just like not being a thing as well. Um but in book two it really got me. Like I really did ship them, I really did get behind them. And I definitely want to see more from these characters and see more from these characters together. Question number nine newest favourite character. So to be perfectly honest, there's no standouts. There's no favourite character that really stands out to me that I'm like Yes, amazing, love. Actually, if I would in included July books, I feel like there is no standout, but maybe it's just because I've read it so recently. But either way, we're not including July, this is a mid-year free hit tag. But I went through my Goodreads and I just like scrolled through the books that I'd read this year. And when I got to Archangel's Enigma, I was like, ooh, okay, this one could work. In this book, we are... I'm pretty sure for the first time, but if it's not the first time, then we've only seen them in passing before. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's the first time we meet Andromeda. And she was such a cool character. Like, so interesting. So interesting to follow. And a very different character to all of the previous characters that we've followed in this series. And yeah, I really liked her as a character. I hope we get to see more of her in books in the future. If you've never heard of this series, essentially after the first three books, Following on from that point, each book follows a different couple. We do occasionally see the couple from the first three books have a point of view again um, in later books, but it doesn't happen that frequently. So in this one, we for the first time follow NASA and Andromeda. I doubt we'll get their point of views and see them like from their perspectives again, but I really do hope that we do because I've really had a lot of fun with this one. And yeah, I find Andromeda to be a really, really cool character. Question number 10, a book that made you cry. And I actually don't think I have any that have made me properly cry. So, I will kind of say, so The Last Devil Is To Die made me a little teary-eyed, but I was like, I was expecting to sob for this, and I was just a little teary-eyed, like I wouldn't call that crying. And then, surprisingly, one of the Zodiac Academy books I remember making me teary-eyed as well, I can't remember the moment, like I can't remember what exactly it was, but I feel like something happened that did make me teary-eyed in one of those as well. But yeah, 
except for like this and that random zodiac book like honestly none but i will say one of my final books that i read in 2023 was the traveling cat chronicles which i was a mess like so so bad um so i don't know i think especially with that being like one of my final books of 2023 would have taken a lot for a book to really get me this year so yeah i haven't haven't cried at a book yet i don't know it's not really something i think about before going into a book um but obviously it means a lot if a book makes you cry like a book was that impactful that emotional got you that well that like it gave like a visceral reaction out of you so like yeah like I don't know I don't like crying but I feel like for a book to make you cry say so many positive things about a book that like I did kind of want that but I don't want to say I want that like I wouldn't want that in every book I read but I definitely hope that I get that before the end of the year. Question number 11 a book that made you happy. Now the book that I picked for this is The School. This is a I don't even think it's middle grade I think it's younger than that it's like a picture book so we mainly see pictures so yeah i think this is classed as like younger than middle grade i think but either way really cool book the illustrations added a lot the story was incredible the author's note at the end made the story even cooler and it did definitely make me happy like i definitely smiled a lot for it this i would like to take a note and say i don't know 100 percent if the book made me happy or the way that it was read made me happy me and my boyfriend read this together and like one of us did the narration and the other one did the voices and it was just like a really fun afternoon spent together reading this cool interesting book so that also made me really happy I, th I think the book would have made me happy even if I was just like reading it myself but obviously like how you read can also really impact like your enjoyment and yeah this just brings so many happy memories so yeah I'd say this one question number 12 the most beautiful book that you have brought or received this year and that is very easy for me I don't buy many special editions but one special edition I did get was A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal this right so first of all we'll look at the front forgive the crime that i've left the sticker on but i just i don't want to rip it so because it's black and blends in i've just kind of left it but so this is the front already amazing and we've got this steam this steam <gasps> sprayed edges with the steam coming up it's a black black and then the steam hopefully it's focusing on the book and not my face right and then the inside look 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 and at the back too and at the back too and then if there's one thing that gets me it's like a good map or a good start to a book and this is just stunning and we don't just have this one we then also have like this setup where you can't fully see any maps but you can see like little bits here and here and like see layout and this doesn't just happen at act one it happens write the book as well if i can find the next one ah here we go act two we also have like off oh, just absolutely stunning so yeah this is definitely the most beautiful book that i've got this year okay and then final question i've i've, I've reclined back i have reclined back i've been filming for a while um final question question number 13 what books do you need to read by the end of the year a lot so a few that i've got recently that i'm super excited about getting to the battle drum bunny scythe the goblin emperor hags but there's a hell of a lot more as well there's so many books that i'm so excited to get to and on top of that oh, i feel like i mentioned this in almost every video but a massive goal for this year is to reduce my tbr i set myself a goal at the start of the year to get my tbr below 200 which yes is still a lot but that was like my year one goal like this is a goal that i think i'll be doing for quite a while and year one was to get to under 200 and to do that i'm gonna need to read 89 more books off my tbr without buying any more to like hit that goal by the end of the year so <laughs> yeah that's fun i i don't know honestly i don't think i'm gonna hit it but i'm gonna still try my very best and yeah there's so many books that i want to read before the end of the year there's so many like new books new releases as well like there's a lot i just pre-ordered a book literally last night called fear the flames that i'd wanted to read for ages um it was originally indie published and i wanted to read it then and then it got picked up and it got like taken off 
anywhere that I read books before I could read it. And I've completely forgot about it and I did include it in my anticipated releases of July to December because it didn't show up anywhere because like technically it's not a new release. I mean it's the first time it's been traditionally published but it hadn't shown up in any of the like websites and ways that I use to find like at my anticipated releases because it's already been published. So I've just pre-ordered that. That one I'm definitely going to read before the end of the year. Um, it will also get one of my r slash fantasy bingos done. So yeah, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a hell of a lot that I want to read before the end of the year. So yeah, that is the end of the video. Those are all 13 of the questions of the mid-year free coat tag. I do really hope that you enjoyed the video. Please do give it a like if you did like it. Subscribe down below if you'd like to see more content like this and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.